right, we also t this morning have team coverage about the effects of red tide here in southwest Florida. Fox 4's Alexandra Angel is live at Bonita Beach Park this morning. Uh, she's going to tell us what conditions are like there right now. And Fox 4 meteorologist Lauren Petrelli will give us a look at the red tide forecast as we go through the day. But we want to start with Alex. So Alex, kind of walk us through, uh, you know, we're getting further into the morning. The sun is up. What does it feel like for anyone who's considering heading to the beach right now? You know, it's not pleasant out here. The, the smell and the irritation is not as bad as other days where I came out here and I'm coughing and, you know, I can feel it, you know, in my throat. But it is unpleasant just looking at all the fish along the shoreline. You can see right here these uh, dead fish. And this is how it looks like all the way down Bonita Beach. And to give you a better idea of what it looked like yesterday, there was even more fish. There was rows of dead fish. But, you know, workers have been on here with heavy machinery cleaning up the beach. And now as red tide could intensify into the summer, we're getting a better idea of what to expect. The group Captains for Clean Water says you can plan on this being similar to what we had after Hurricane Irma in 2018. And if that happens, it means red tide blooms are likely to last into the summer months. And the big question people have is, can we go in the water? Well, a doctor from Lee Health says you do need to take caution. People that do not that throw caution to the wind and may go ahead and get in water that doesn't smell good or doesn't look good uh, and ingest some of that water they may get some symptoms of nausea uh, diarrhea stomach cramping and of course as we're out here like i said it's not pleasant we do have a lot of a uh, dead fish and it's the smell of the dead fish that's kind of you know bothering us if you can tell i do have lauren here joining us today yeah alex i will talk more about the red tide levels and how that's going to impact the irritation that maybe you're feeling not so much today but you did a couple of days ago first i want to bring amy in before we kind of get into the data because amy you have some pictures that are from over the weekend and it really just goes to show this is not concentrated just here along Bonita Beach. This is something that's impacting all of Southwest Florida's coastline. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, being on the beach there, or if you're out in your boat, Sometimes that's hard to see the red tide, right? We can feel it. We can feel that burning in our throat. Sometimes maybe your eyes are watering, but this gives you an idea of what we are really dealing with. So these are pictures, uh, bird's eye view from Calusa Waterkeepers. They were taken over the weekend along the uh, coast there. This is from Marco Island all the way to Sanibel, and it really paints a picture of just how far out this spreads. Yeah, absolutely. And so much of the red tide depends on the weather. What we saw over the weekend in those pictures may be different now. It seems to change almost by the day. So let's bring Lauren back and Lauren, what can you tell us about what you're seeing today? Yeah, I mean, Chris, while we kind of go through the data together because these samples are updated daily, I want to have our photographer walk with me up and down the beach only because I haven't seen fish kills like this as bad in such a long time and we can't even go maybe 10 feet without seeing some type of dead sea life. So right now you're taking a look at dead puffer fish, lady fish, bait fish, even some uh, you have uh, the uh, crabs that I've been seeing. So one of the reasons why this is happening, obviously red tide, but as uh, our team back in the studio, if they could pop up that red tide map, I can show you we're starting to see those levels fluctuate a little bit more. So over in Sarasota and Charlotte counties, we are seeing uh, anywhere between low to medium concentrations of red tide. If you get closer to Sanibel, an area that was dealing with high levels of concentrations, now dealing with low to medium concentrations. So a slight improvement right there. Here's where I'm seeing the biggest difference. This is going to be Fort Myers Beach South all the way down to Naples. Within the past 48 hours, we saw these levels go from high concentrations of red tide to closer to low to high concentrations of red tide. So again, we don't have all of those high concentrations completely gone, but at least we're starting to see some of those levels decrease ever so slightly. Getting closer to Marco Island, they are dealing with not present to low concentrations of red tide, an area over the weekend that I told you about that was dealing with medium concentrations of red tide. Now, if you wanted to head out to the beach maybe for today, we do have uh, something new from NOAA. It's going to be this forecast model for red tide. It's very much wind driven, and it does show here on Benita Beach right around 2, 3 o'clock when the winds are expected to pick up. That is when we could start to see the irritation level possibly go up for you. So the key 
key there, if you want to head out to the beach we're on right now, the earlier you get out, the better, because when the wind starts to pick up, the irritants can be carried further inland, and that can really start to bother you. I want to move on over to Tarpon Bay. This is closer to Sanibel. Since they're dealing with the lower concentrations of red tide as of this morning, they're going to be dealing with low to moderate possibilities of irritation. So I know a lot of the beaches along Sanibel aren't open, but since they're starting off with the lower concentrations of red tide, uh, it's less likely you'll be as irritated compared to if you're going to a beach that has high concentrations of red tide. This is really something that we've been covering for weeks now and team, you know, we will continue to cover this, not even just on air, but also online. Uh, we know that this is so important to people who live in Southwest Florida as working up and down the coast and getting this cleaned up after Hurricane Ian is not just important to us, but so many other businesses and industries that rely on this. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that update, Lauren, from uh, Bonita Beach Park. Let's get a